This week's Epic Epoch Update brings you the four articles that I published this past week. And uh, okay, let's just get directly right into it because uh, the first one I want to mention, it's a doozy. It's called Richard Carrier is a polyamorous dog. Okay, so this pertains to the uh, atheist Richard Carrier. Who, you know, goes on and on about, wrote a book about how to be moral without God and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, well, that's nice. Um, So, he has recently announced that he is polyamorous. Now, if you have not heard of the term polyamorous, it's a term that's quaint, hip, uh, pop cultural right now, and you'll be hearing it a lot more. And it's basically just a nice way to refer to being a perverted sexual deviant. I mean, that's pretty much the bottom line. Because, you know, um, that's just how our culture is, you know. We don't want to say that we had sex. We want to say sleep together, right? We don't want to call things for what they are. We want to play games with words. So obviously poly, meaning more than one, and amorous from amore, you know, to love, of course, this is love and sex, Um, so Richard Carrier, for whatever reason, decides he needs to share with the world that he has divorced his wife, and now he has a bunch of girlfriends, yeah, so basically, um, well, the way I start the article is to point out that in criminal investigations, there's a well-known phrase that goes, follow the money. Well, in atheist circles, especially amongst males, because, I mean, atheism is a white, young male phenomenon, primarily. Um, It's a case of follow the erection. I mean, I don't know how else to put it, but basically, with all his brilliance, uh, Richard Carrier figured out he could have a bunch of sex with a bunch of women. Mazel tov. That's just, wow so enlightened you know so that's what this one's about (laughs) and you'll actually find out the very reason why I refer to him as a dog it's due to a certain quote I put into that article another article that I'll just mention briefly because you know it's it's uh, the research is within the article it's called ancient soul catchers and this pertains to one of those biblical passages from where which we get a window into the uh, various pagan practices of the nations that were around Israel you know the ones about which no one ever complains uh, so for instance atheists go on and on and on and on about the brutality of the exodus from Egypt but never ever ever condemn the Egyptians for holding the Hebrews as slaves you know because that's I mean come on atheism is an anti-christian support group So, this one is about one of those texts and trying to figure out what this issue is about uh, a trinket, a talisman type thing that was called essentially a soul catcher. So, this is um, a traipsed down history to try to figure out what this thing was. Another one is a post relating to my series on that's called abortions arguments and this one is one of three that I'll post in a row that is basically uh, allowing pro-abortionists to speak in their own words so I just kind of get out of the way and quote a bunch of them and see the incredibly disturbing things that they have to say you know, everything from blaming a uh, right-wing political administration for ha- having to have their abortion to uh, claiming that God has blessed them and put them in the position to be an abortion doctor. I mean, just really, really disturbing stuff. Because, of course, when you support the brutal and painful murder of beautiful, innocent, and defenseless healthy human babies, you have to kind of invent um, psychological and emotional band-aids, right? You have to, well, let me put it this way, there's a fine line between a reason and an excuse. 
And the last one is a continuing series about uh, me writing a reply to an atheist that goes by the name of Neo. And in this case, we have a little back and forth about the terms and the definitions of free thought and atheism. Because, you know, it's amazing that we're still debating the definition of the word <laughs> atheism. Mostly because atheists don't like the way that the word has traditionally been defined, which is a positive affirmation of God's non-existence. So now the sort of pop definition has been making its way into the dictionary slowly, which is just a mere lack of belief in God's. And of course, free thought, because since I call myself true free thinker, I've received many, many emails through the years, um, basically telling me how preposterous it is that I can be a theist a Judeo-Christian, and call myself a free thinker. It's a contradiction in terms. Well, what we find out is that according to uh, certain dictionary definitions, for example, a deist can be a free thinker. So there you go. You can be a theist, at least in the form of deism, and be a, be a free thinker. And of course, as I always point out, there are many, many, many definitions, right? There's grammatical definitions, there's philosophic definitions, scientific definitions, theological definitions. So, um, as important as it is to come to terms with terms, to define our terms when we use them, there is also another aspect of it, which is how it's being applied and in what context and how words change meaning over time and, you know, this kind of concept. For example, uh, free thinker or free thought, as well as atheism in this case. So that's your wrap-up. Uh, that's the Epic Epoch update for this week, and I'll put all the links to all the articles in the info section, and uh, if you could at least open all of them up, that would really help because I get paid a few shekels here and there uh, per traffic and per su su subscription. So if you go to the examiner site and you subscribe, that'll help me a lot. And you can financially support me and it won't cost you a single penny. Who else would offer that, huh? All right, thanks.